Hi guys and welcome to a new video where we are going to start to introduce you to the tools that we are going to use with Python to do efficient data analysis. So this video introduces two of the most two of the foundational packages for scientific Python, which is NumPy and Pandas. NumPy, which stands for numerical Python offers fast and efficient processing or array-like data structures for numerical data storing and manipulating data with the python built-ins for example lists or dictionaries is much slower than using a numpy array moreover numpy arrays are often used by other libraries as containers for input and output of different algorithms that require vectorized operations so if you don't use uh, anaconda and you want to install numpy with pip you just use this i have already installed it via via anaconda but this is if you want to install it separately so like i said when using the batteries include anaconda distribution developers will find both numpy and pandas pre-installed so the so the, if you are using anaconda then this step is not necessary the core data structure of this library numpy is the multi-dimensional array called n nd array so the following snippet i have if i execute it if you're using jupyter just shift enter it will execute the command and it showcases the creation of a simple array with numpy so let's dig into what we what kind of information we are getting and I'll explain in a bit in a minute. So the example shows that our data are represented by a one-dimensional array, the endim attribute, with three elements as we expect. The data type of the array is int64 or int32 in my uh, case, as all our inputs are integers. And we can observe the speed of the NumPy array by profiling a simple operation, such as the sum of a list using the timeit module. And the timeit module it takes a piece of code as the first parameter, parameter, and runs its the number of times producing the time required for the run as output in order to focus on the specific piece of code that we are analyzing, the initial data setup and the required imports are removed to the setup parameter that will be run only once and will not be included in the profiling. The last parameter number limits uh, the number of uh, iterations to 10,000 instead of the default, which is 1 million. The output uh, should be, if you try it in your system, should look something like this, depending on your processing power. So as we can see, the built-in sum function is almost 10 times slower than the numpy sum function. For more complex pieces of code, we can easily observe differences of a greater order of magnitude. 
and some uh, uh, tip on naming conventions in Python. The Python community has converged on some de facto standards to import some popular libraries. NumPy and Pandas are two well-known examples as they are usually imported with an alias. For example, import NumPy as N NP as we used in our example. In this way, NumPy functionalities can be accessed with np.function underscore name as illustrated in the preceding example. Similarly, the Pandas library is aliased to PD. In principle, importing the whole library namespace, like from NumPy import uh, asterisk, which is, stands for all, all the modules in NumPy. Uh, this is considered bad practice because it pollutes the current namespace. And some of the char characteristics of a NumPy array that we want to keep in mind are detailed as follows. The size of a NumPy array is fixed at creation, unlike, for example, Python lists that can be changed dynamically. So operations that change the size of the array are really creating a new one and deleting the original. And the data type for each element of the array must be the same, with the exception of having arrays for objects hence potentially of different memory sizes. NumPy promotes the use of operations with vectors, producing a more compact and readable code. And the second library we are going to look at in this section is Pandas. It is built on top of NumPy, so it also provides fast computation and it offers convenient data structures called series and data frame, which will allow us to perform data manipulation in a flexible and concise way. So some of the nice features of Pandas include the following. It's fast and efficient objects for data manipulation. It has tools to read and write data between different formats such as CSV, text files, Microsoft Excel spreadsheets or SQL data structures. It has intelligent handling of missing data and related data alignment. And it has uh, label-based slicing and dicing of large data sets. And it has SQL-like data aggregation and data transformation. And it support has support for time series functionalities and also has integrated plotting functionalities. And you can uh, install pandas from the cheese shop, which is pip, with the usual procedure, pip install pandas, if you don't want to use anaconda. So let's consider an example where we run it in Python or in Jupyter, in my case, using a small made up toy example of our user data. I just executed that and let's see Excuse me, one second. So this is the example and I already executed it here. So let's see what we get from the head. So the initial data layout is based on a dictionary where the keys are attributes of the users. A user ID and age represented as number of years. The values in the dictionary in the dictionary are lists and for each user the corresponding attributes are aligned depending on the position. Once we create the data frame with this date these data, the alignment of the data becomes immediately immediately clear. The head function prints the data in a tabular form truncating to the first 10 lines if the data is bigger than that. We can now augment the data frame by adding one more column. And let's print out 
what we had just added. Use, using pandas declarative syntax, we don't need to iterate through the whole column in order to access its data, but we can apply a SQL-like operation as shown in the preceding example. This operation has used the existing data to create a column of booleans. We can also augment the data frame by adding new data. That's the next line here. Now let's see what's added in the our table. So we have again added some Boolean values for all if they like Python or not. And we can observe some basic descriptive statistics using the describe method. So So this is an example of using uh, pandas. So in the next section we are going to use go over machine learning. So see you in the next video.